Hi, I'm Alana Simon. I'm a high school student in New York City and a survivor of a rare pediatric liver cancer called fibrolamellar hepatocellular carcinoma. I decided to sequence the genome of my own cancer and through analyzing billions of base pairs from over 10 patients, I discovered a unique change in the DNA that seems to cause this cancer. Until now, no one had understood what causes this and now we actually have a potential diagnostic for this cancer, which is great because the key to surviving fibrolamellar is finding it early. Furthermore, my work suggests potential treatments for this cancer, which is even better. I was first diagnosed when I was 12 years old. It was a rare cancer that affects mostly adolescents and young adults called fibrolamellar hepatocellular carcinoma. At the time, people didn't know much about it and it was often overlooked or misdiagnosed, I was very lucky in that through an intensive liver surgery in which they removed most of my liver, I was able to get the entire tumor out and I've been fine ever since. But I realized that this cancer has been kind of ignored as not many people are affected by it. So fast forward four years and once I was old enough to start working in a lab, through a teacher at my school I got an internship at this lab in New York City that was studying pancreatic cancer. So, since I had some experience with computer science, they had me find online these giant files that had the genome sequencing of tumorous pancreatic cancer cells and then their adjacent healthy cells. And so, I was looking through and comparing the gene mutations between the regular and the tumor cells and I was trying to find what seemed to be the driver mutations, what seemed to be causing this cancer and what was a significant difference between the two samples. So, two things that made the study difficult were that most cancers occur later in life and so, a given adult will have maybe 3,000 to 5,000 mutations in their DNA. And that sounds like a lot, but out of the 3 billion base pairs you have, it's not that significant. However, if you're looking for that one or two driver mutations that could be causing the cancer, they could get completely lost in the 3,000, like finding a needle in a haystack. Furthermore, the tumors could have been around for decades, just slowly growing in these adults. And so the tumor themselves could have tons of mutations that are completely unrelated to the original mutation that caused the cancer. So that makes it even more difficult to find these significant mutations. So my idea was to look at adolescent cancer because in a younger person, you're gonna have less mutations just in your regular DNA. Plus your tumor can have been around for decades if you haven't been around for decades. So obviously given my bias of having had the cancer, I decided to study fibrolamellar. So I spoke with my surgeon, Dr. Michael Aqualia, at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, and he offered his full cooperation and that of some of his surgical fellows who were able to mentor me and help me as I hadn't had much experience in running my own research. I also, through my dad's lab, was able to get access to some space to actually perform the research. So the first year was spent just getting the proper clearance from various boards to oversee the human research and planning all the experiments and lining up all the right people for the steps. So I had to get people to cut all the slices and pathologists to evaluate the tissue. But after all that was done and the genomes were sequenced and I started looking through it, we found that there were actually very few mutations, which was encouraging. Um, and there was one consistent change that we saw, which was this one deletion in a copy of the chromosome. So to explain further, I'll start by explaining how the information is coded in some of the chromosomes. All of our genetic material is stored in the form of DNA in the middle of the cell. We have two complete copies of each DNA. Each of the chromosomes in the cell is a long strand of DNA. Each gene is encoded in the DNA. Here are two examples of genes, one encoded in green and the other in orange. Each gene has its own start signal and its own stop signal. In response to the start signal, there are machines that move along the DNA and make copies of the DNA in the form of RNA. Initially, this RNA has the parts of the DNA that encodes the genes, but also some connecting segments. These connecting segments are then spliced out. This spliced RNA moves out of the central part of the cell into the periphery. Here, special machines, shown here as red dots, use the information in the RNA to make proteins, the molecules that do much of the work of the cell. What did we find in our work? We initially sequenced all of the DNA and all of the RNA in 10 fibrolamellar tumors, as well as in the adjacent normal tissue. In all 10 patients, we saw what appeared to be a deletion in the DNA, a deletion caused by a break followed by a rejoining. This had two consequences. First, on one of the two chromosomes, a few genes were lost. Second, and most significantly, on that same chromosome, there was a new gene that started with the start of one gene and then made part of that gene, 
and then continued with the rest of the second gene. Such a new gene that is a mixture of two genes is called a chimera. This chimera gene would make an RNA that is also a chimera, a mixture of two RNAs. It would be expected to also leave the middle of the cell to the periphery, where the same machine should read the instructions and make a new protein, a chimera protein. Why is this being called a chimera? The chimera is a fire-breathing creature from Greek mythology that's the fusion of a snake, a goat, and a lion. However, the term has since been used to describe any mythological animal that's a hybrid of two or more animals. In this case, we needed to determine if our chimera gene was real or mythological. It was possible that this was due to an artifact of how the machines read the genomic sequences. To search for a chimera, we used an antibody that would recognize only the head of the first protein and another antibody that would only recognize the body of another. We were able to demonstrate that these two antibodies were recognizing one and the same protein. The chimera was not a myth. Many of these strange chimeras produced proteins that misfold, cannot function, and are destroyed by the cell. Surprisingly, not only is this chimera made, but it retains all of its activity. Why is this work important? We have found the same change in every patient tested, which strongly suggests that this could be the change that is driving this cancer. Further, everything we know about this chimera suggests that this could be causing this disease. Based on that, we can develop tests to detect the cancer and design strategies to help fight it. Why would this chimera be causing the cancer? The largest part of the chimera is a very special kind of protein called a kinase. Kinase is a kind of protein that turns on other proteins. These modified proteins often, once modified, go and turn on tons of different genes in a cell. In our case, the chimera was not only active, but it was much more active than usual. This is because it was being overproduced and it had nothing to regulate its activity. It was being overproduced because the start signal for the first part of the chimera is very high, so a lot of this chimera is being made. But also, the regulatory region for the second part of the chimera, the kinase, the main part, it's usually in the head of the kinase, but that's the part that's missing in this chimera. So tons of this chimera is being produced and nothing is regulating its activity. So it's constantly active and continuously turning on normally quiet gene pathways in the cell. We looked at more samples and we have found this in 15 out of 15 patients examined. And now we're looking at the genes that are turned on by this chimera and trying to understand what causes this cancer. And also in the hopes that we can now use targeted therapy for treating the cancer. So these results are extremely important for all of my friends who are fighting fibrolamellar and everyone in that community. However, it should also be important to everyone, even though it's only a rare disease, for a few reasons. First of all, often when people identify a driving mutation for a given cancer, they later find that it actually causes other kinds of cancers too. And that could be the case with this chimera. Furthermore, this demonstrates the benefits of studying pediatric cancer. Finally, when I was first diagnosed, it seemed like no one cared about the disease. No one knew anything about it or what to do with it. But now, due to the great advances in science and technology, just look how much progress is being made. So I want everyone out there with rare diseases to know that there really can be hope now.